Howdy folks, welcome back to Chrome 3D Circuit Simulator. Today we're going to take a quick look at a little transistor amp and the function generator. I've just got a real basic circuit here. We're going to play around with it a little bit, It'll be a pretty quick video. Right, let's turn on the power. Uh, so we've got a 5 volt power supply here. I'm actually going to crank that up to 9 volts, I think. Should still be okay. We got a little bit of warning on the LED current. Check that guy, 220. Yeah, that should be fine. That's just a power LED. So we have a basic function generator here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. Well, before I turn it on, let me explain the circuit real quick. I've got the uh, scope view on the output of this uh, transistor amplifier and the input coming from the function generator. This is just an NPN, uh, I think it's called emitter follower setup. Turn on pins. Are those the shortcut keys? Oh, cool. So you can see we got our emitter is just tied to ground and our output's coming off the collector. We've got a 4.7K up to positive and then our output's coming off the collector there. So when this uh, transistor gets a positive input above a certain level, it ties this to ground and that gets our, our signal. Green LED is power, yellow, yellow LED is going to just follow the signal coming from the function generator, and the red LED is the output. And then we've got a PSO speaker too, so if we get a high enough frequency, we can actually hear it. And it is not happy. <laughs> I think it's because I turned the, uh, the voltage up over here. I had this run at 5 volts. Uh, let me set this to back a little more conservative, like 470 ohms. And let's go ahead and make that a, a half watt resistor. Update that. All right, that definitely took the volume down. Let's try like 220. And you can see the tone changes. It's not 100% on uh, frequencies and stuff. This adjusts based on how quickly your computer can simulate what's going on. So it's bumped the simulation frequency down to 2700 hertz. And it's just really busy trying to simulate a 440 hertz uh, sine wave coming off of here. If we slow this down so we can actually see the waveform, we don't have a full oscilloscope function, so we can't like trigger or anything like that. Let's just take it down to one hertz. And it's giving me a warning. What's that saying? LA current rating exceeded. Really? Okay. Sure. <laughs> really messed it up moving up to 5 volts. Alright, so you can see this has kind of a different flash than this. This is just kind of on off. So we're getting a square wave out. So we have a sine wave going in, which is the green. And I had, I don't see any way to change this. It's going from positive rail to negative rail. So positive five volts to negative five volts. Uh, I don't see at least yet any way to change that on the function generator to go from like zero to five. So we get a big old swing on a sine wave on the input. I guess I should have made this green and this blue to match the scope. <laughs> And you can see little artifacts here and there. Like I said, it's not a perfect simulation. So now that we've slowed that down a bit, we can actually see what's going on. We can speed it up just a little bit. And we can also change this input to a square wave. Now you can see they're kind of just matching. And we've got the uh, triangle wave. It's just back to a slightly different flash because this is kind of ramping up and down, or is this just on off? And then we have a sawtooth. So slow rise, instant drop gives us a sawtooth. You can see there we're getting some bouncing. So I don't know if we can get rid of that. I did have a full setup with like a bias resistors on the input and everything. Didn't seem to make much difference. I'm still learning my way around. 
transistors in here, they're not simulated exactly. So you can't get like an A-stable uh, multivibrator to work, stuff like that. At least I haven't been able to. I just wanted to show off the function generator. It's kind of handy. You do various things with it. And if we bump that back up into the audible range. I was going up to 440, but you can see it's not changing now because it's not simulating it fast enough. You go up to this cog here. I can crank that back up. I'm just going to crank it all the way up and that's auto throttle is on. So it's trying to find the fastest speed it can successfully simulate this circuit. Looks like it's settled on a 400 or a 4600 hertz. Oh, 4200 hertz. 3800 hertz. <laughs> it keeps drawing down as it tries to simulate. But the scope function is pretty handy. You can pick pretty much any like passing component. You can't do uh, transistors or anything. Uh, but we can see how much. You can see how much current's going through that resistor. Voltage is usually a little easier to see what's going on. A little more info. So let's go to like 10 hertz. No, oh, five. I haven't figured any way to change like the display on the scope view. All right, let's go to two hertz. There we go. And you can just pick various things on the circuit so we can see the LED there. We're looking at current. It's got some kind of strange peaks in it. Interestingly enough, so let's grab this one too. It's got a lot cleaner. So I don't know where all this noise is coming from. It could just be a uh, simulation. And of course you can change the voltage here. So we get the voltage down low enough, this LED won't work anymore. See, the, the circuit itself is still working. It's enough to trigger the transistor. It's not enough to light up that LED that we've got on the input. And it starts kind of dying off when you get low enough. Not enough voltage to trigger it. So there you have it. Just a little quick video, taking a look at the function generator. Playing around with some transistors. Let me know in the comments what uh, circuits are you making? Or also, uh, what would you like to see me do in here? If you want to find out more about things up here, let me know. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.